What's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 4 best healer builds for PvP and PvE in New World. So for each and every single build I will explain what attributes, weapon masteries and even weapon and gear perks you want to have. Then what gems and specific gear you want to use to get out your stats as much healing as possible. Then as well I will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons so you would know which abilities you want to use first on your enemy or your teammates and much more. So if all this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first build which is by far the best healer build in the entire game and for the weapons we want to use the void gauntlet and life stuff. And then these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0, you want to get your focus to 150. And then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 300 focus and 150 constitution. And lastly, for your gear, you want to go with the medium category. And the best gear setup is to have heavy helmet, heavy chest armor, medium gloves, light pants and medium boots. And this will give you 22.9 kilogram weight, which is exactly just below the heavy weight category. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the void gauntlet and then these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock both these two perks and then the first ability called the oblivion and then get these two perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the petrifying scream and then get these two perks as well. And now let's move over to the other side and unlock the last third ability called the orb of decay and then get these three perks and that's it. Now from this moment you can unlock all the other perks in whatever way you like. So then let's go over to the second weapon which is the life staff. And then these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock this one perk and then the first ability called the sacred ground. And then afterwards unlock all these three perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then the second ability called the beacon and then get these two perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace and then get these two perks as well. And now from this point you are free to spend your points in whatever order you want. Okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So first of all for the void gauntlet we have the first Q ability called the oblivion which creates a circle around you and your teammates inside the circle will be getting 20% damage increase but on the other hand your enemies standing in the circle will be taking void damage every second and a really nice thing to do is while standing in the circle do a bunch of medium jumps and because of the perks we have selected V and any other allies in the circle will be getting plus 15 stamina each jump so this will give us the ability to dodge more enemy attacks and gain more stamina at the same time I found this feature very useful in wars to escape enemy attacks or in PvE, where the mobs can catch me and much more. So then for the second ability we have a petrifying scream, which when using will unleash a void scream and this will stagger and root enemies in front of you and then lastly we have the third ability, which is called the orb of decay and you can fire this orb which can go through your enemies and each enemy that it hits it will deal decent damage and reduce their damage absorption and then later that orb will come back and heal your nearby teammates and yourself. Self. And lastly, if you hold the right mouse button, you can regain more mana, but in exchange, your health will go down. This is by far the only build that I would recommend to use this mechanic. So, if you're standing in your own healing circle and you really need more mana and your mana potions are on cooldown, then hold the left mouse button for a second or two and you should be good to go. So, then for the second weapon, we have the life staff, and your Q ability is called the Sacred Ground, which you have to point and select the area you want to place it in and then cast it for a split second. Then the R ability is called the lights embrace and it basically works the same way just for a single target and you can heal yourself by holding the control button and then activating the spell and lastly we have the f ability called the beacon which you can just aim and it places a huge circle on the ground and if you target the player you can attach the spell to him specifically so instead of the circle being on the ground it will be attached to a player making this spell very useful in expeditions and group pvp so this build's main objective is to heal your teammates but at the same time support them with extra damage increase. So the way you want to use this build is first of all use your life staff and use all the three healing spells. I prefer to use the beacon and then the lights embrace ability and this way my healing is increased. And with the low lights embrace cooldown I can basically spam it every 2-3 seconds. And then on grouped up allies I use the sacred ground ability. And then when your teammates call out to give them extra damage switch to the void gauntlet and use the oblivion spell and give them extra damage. And when usually my life staff abilities are on cooldown I use the petrifying scream first and then the orb of decay. 
and this roots enemies in front of me and I get to heal myself and nearby teammates. So then for my last and final conclusions for this build. This void gauntlet and life staff weapon combination is very strong and it is definitely the new meta for healers. And then lastly for the life staff you want to use the diamond gem. Then for your void gauntlet get the opal gem. And then for all of your gear, rings, amulets and everything else use the enix gems. And then on top of all this for the life staff you want to get the blessing perk which will give you plus 20% healing bonus. Then for the second perk get the refreshing move. So each light or heavy attack that you do reduces your cooldowns by 2.8%. Specifically for the life staff, you don't want to look for perks that will give you more damage, but instead the perks that will give you more healing and faster cooldown time, so you could use your healing abilities a lot quicker. And then for the void gauntlet, you want to mainly get the keen, vicious or enchanted perk, but if you get at least one of them or even two, then you already have a really good weapon. But as well, you can settle with anything like the keen speed perk or anything else that will give you a slight advantage to your weapon. And then lastly for your ring, you want to get the sacred perk, which will give you a about plus 8.4% on outgoing healing. And then moving over to your gear and you mainly want to get the resilient perk, which will reduce the critical damage that you take. Then for the second perk, get the freedom, which will make any slow, stun or silence on you expire 7.5% faster. And then lastly on my gear I got the putrefying scream, which on successful hit reduces the enemy's healing by 28%. But mainly for gear you want to look for resilient and freedom perk. And then take any other perks that will give you something extra for the the life staff or void gauntlet. And then lastly get the amulet that every single build should use which has the health perk that gives you 9.4% maximum health and that's about it. So in a quick summary, if you are looking for the best healer pvp and pve build and you want to deal damage but at the same time support the rest of your teammates then this is the best build for you so have fun. So then moving over to the second build which is the one and only life staff and rapier and then these are the attributes you want to have. So no matter from which level you start using this build you first of all want to get your focus to 200 and then get 50 points in constitution and then continue putting everything else in focus and around level 60 you should have 300 focus and 150 constitution. And then lastly for your gear you again want to go with the medium category and the best gear setup is to have heavy helmet, heavy chest armor medium gloves, light pants and medium boots. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the live staff and then these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the swan perk and then the first ability called the sacred ground and then afterwards unlock all these three perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk and then the second ability called the beacon and then get these two perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace and then get these two perks as well. And now from this point you are free to spend your points in whatever order you prefer. So then let's go over to the second weapon which is the rapier and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock right off from the start both these two abilities called the evade and repost and then afterwards unlock both these two perks. Then lastly get the third ability called the fleech and then get these three perks. And now let's take a closer look at the left side and get both these two perks and that's it. Now from this point you are free to spend your points in whatever order you like. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So first of all let me explain you each ability and then what is the best spell combination to use. And as we already looked into the life staff abilities and how they work in the first build, so I will just skip that part for now and we will go straight for the second weapon which is the rapier. And the first Q spell is called the evade, which by activating makes you invulnerable for a split second. And it can be good in dodging enemy attacks but you have to know how to use it. So then we have the second ability called the repost and it is a reflect which means that when you activate it and if the enemy hits you you will reflect the incoming damage from you to him so if he does an f ability on you instead of you getting hit he will hit himself and lastly we have the fleech ability which deals damage and provides a small but nice mobility slash dash spell so then as far as your ability combinations go when in combat you first of all want to remember that all the things i said in the first build so use the beacon ability first and then the lights embrace ability and this way your healing will be increased and then as the lights embrace cooldown is very short you can basically spam it every few seconds and then to heal yourself hold the control button and then activate the spell and then lastly for grouped up teammates use the sacred ground ability 
And then as far as your attacking goes for range attacks, you want to keep on using your life staff, light or heavy attacks. But then if you get attacked or you want to challenge a player, then you have two options. Either way, use the flinch ability and dash into the enemy or dash away from him. And then from here, if you want to fight, then use the repost ability and then reflect his next incoming attack. And then lastly, keep on using your left clicks, aka the light attacks on the rapier and combine with the evade ability as soon as it gets off cooldown and that's about it. So then for my last and final conclusions for this build. This life staff and rapier weapon combination is very good in outpost rush, PvE farming and much more. The best thing about this build is that you can do range damage with the life staff and then at any time if you get attacked you can use your rapier mobility spell and easily run away or perhaps turn around and fight the enemy. So then lastly for your life staff you want to use the diamond gem. Then for the rapier get the amber gem and then for all of your gear, amulets, rings and everything else get the enix gems. And then on top of all this like I explained in the first build to find out the best weapon and gear perks watch this video which is titled which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build. You can find the link in this video's description or scroll through my channel and in that video I will specifically explain how perks work, which ones are the best for your specific gear slash weapons and much more. So in a quick summary, if you are looking for a very fun but strong healer build which is useful in PvP and PvE, then for sure try this one out and don't forget to enjoy! So then moving over to the third build which is the healer paladin tank build. And for the weapons we want to use the live staff and sword with shield. And then these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0 you want to get your focus to 150 and then start building your constitution. And around level 60 you should have 250 focus and 200 constitution. And last but not the least, for your gear you want to go with full heavy armor and this time you have to use a shield as well. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the live staff and then these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock this one perk and then the first ability called the sacred ground. And then afterwards unlock all these three perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk and then the second ability called the beacon and then get these two perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace and then get these two perks as well. And now from this moment you are free to spend your points in whatever order you want. So then for the second weapon we have the sword and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all right off from the start you want to unlock both these two perks and then get the first ability called the leaping strike and then get these two perks then from here let's move over to the other side and unlock the second ability called the shield rush and then get these four perks and then lastly unlock the last third ability called the defiant stance and then get these two perks as well and now from this point you are free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next Okay so then let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So first of all you are a off tank slash off healer and right now in the current stage of the game it is used to capture points in wars or just have the main role of standing in front of your enemies and them not being able to kill you. So then for the life stuff your Q ability is called the sacred ground which you have to point and select the area you want to place it in and then cast it for a split second. Then the R ability is called the lights embrace and it basically works the same way just for a single target. And of course you can heal yourself by holding the control button and then activating the spell. And then lastly we have the F ability called the beacon which you just aim and it places a huge circle on the ground. And for more specific information for healers watch the first two builds where I explained more about the life staff itself. So then for the second weapon we have the sword and the first Q spell is called the leaping strike which is basically a damage ability that makes you leap 6 meters to the enemy. Then the second ability is called the shield rush and this spell makes your character run very fast for 5 meters. And if you hit the target while running he will get knocked back. And then our third ability is called the defiant stance which you can activate and for the next 8 seconds your resistance is increased. Or then in PvE if you activate the spell it will increase your threat level which will make all the mobs target you. So then for the actual way to play this build it doesn't matter if you are by yourself in open world or in 50v50 wars. Your main mission is to stay alive and be unkillable while still annoying enemies and helping out your teammates with healing. So the way you want to play this is first of all use the sword and activate the leaping strike or the shield rush abilities whenever you want to attack an enemy and always save your defiant stance ability on when the enemies are about to deal a lot of damage then afterwards switch to the life staff and if the enemy is further away or running use your auto attacks and then of course to heal yourself or teammates use the beacon ability first and then the lights embrace ability and lastly for grouped up allies use the sacred ground ability and that's about it. 
So then in my last and final conclusions for this build, this life staff and sword with shield weapon combination is not meant to deal a lot of damage, but instead it's built to survive multiple players by yourself and still have the option to help out your teammates and deal decent amount of damage to the enemies. And like I've said, this unkillable tank slash healer build is really good for every single activity in the game. And then last but not the least, for your life staff, you want to use the diamond gem. Then for your sword, use the amber gem. And lastly, for all of your gear, amulets, rings, and everything else use the enix gems and then on top of all this like i explained in the first two builds for you to find out the best weapon and gear perks watch this video which is titled which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build you can find the link in this video's description or scroll through my channel and in that video i will explain how perks work which ones are the best for your specific gear slash weapons and much more so in a quick summary if you are looking for the best healer slash tank build that players won't be able to kill you in then this is the build for you so don't forget to have fun so i really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and i hope you enjoyed it if you have any suggestions feedback or other good healer builds that you would like to see in the next video then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below and while you're doing that please click like subscribe and enable that notification bell so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me with all this said you have an amazing day and i'll catch you in the next video so take it easy peace